What's up guys, it's Chris with Iron and Iron Fitness and today I'm making roasted red pepper chicken. Keep watching. This dish is a complete skillet meal. It has everything that you need for a complete meal in one skillet. And we're using boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And then for our sauce, we're gonna use these fire roasted red peppers. We're going to use our food processor and mix this up with some spices. And for our spice blend, we're gonna use salt, pepper, oregano, basil, thyme, garlic, and red pepper flakes. So you could take a shortcut and use one of the Italian seasoning blends, but I like to make my own. You can be flexible with what you have if you only have basil and oregano and don't have the thyme. For example, you can just use what you have and make it work. And then once we whip up our sauce, we're going to start our chicken breasts in our pan and then we're going to add the sauce in. We're going to add in some coconut milk to give it some creamy factor to it. And then we're also going to throw in some other ingredients that make it a complete meal. So for that, I'm going to use artichoke hearts, which I love. And we're going to use cannellini beans. So these are our carbs. And the beans, I love white beans, so another good option for this would be some garbanzo beans. Um, but I really like cannellini, I'm gonna go with those today. And then on top, we're gonna use some Kalamata olives for some salty texture. I also forgot to mention, we are gonna use some um, Bragg's Nutritional Yeast in our red pepper sauce. This will give it a nice cheesy taste without putting in extra cheese. A lot of vegans like to use this in sauces and like fake alfredos and things like that. I have this on board the van and I don't use it very often so um, I'm always looking to incorporate stuff that I have here so that I don't just let it sit up there and waste space. So I just got the pepper into my food processor. I use this little mini Cuisinart smart stick. I like the smart stick because I use this one motor attachment and I can use either my food processor or my immersion blender. You've seen me use my immersion blender a couple of times. The food processor, I'm going to probably use a little bit more now. Um, and then also there's a whisk attachment. So multifunctional piece in a van, which is critical. Um, but you saw me put the pepper in here. I saved this juice because I want to put a little bit of the liquid in there. You want to have a little bit of zhush when you're processing anything. And this is actually just water in here. So if this were roasted peppers in oil, I would not add oil because that is a sure way to just make a calorie bomb out of whatever you're eating. Um, but the water, this is actually a little sweet because uh, it's been marinating in the pepper. So I'm going to throw some of that in there. I'm still going to keep this just in case I need a little bit more. And then I'm going to throw in my seasoning mix for all of the seasoning ratios. Check out my blog, IreneIronFitness.com. Get the full printable recipe. And if you like this recipe, hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And now that we got this in, I'm just going to add a little more of this. I'm going to start mixing it. All right, so let's give this a go. And that's pretty easy. So let's take this off. And I don't know, there's just something like comforting in making your own sauce. This has a really vibrant color and you can choose your spices, putting in your own spices. This can of peppers was very affordable. And when you buy products like a can of roasted red peppers, you can decide how you want to use it. So you can take that can, you could put it out on like a charcuterie board or chop it up into a quinoa salad or put it into a sauce like we're doing here. You could make it into a salad dressing. So when you buy something in its whole form, like roasted peppers, you can then decide what you want to do, how you want to use it. You can have one canned product in your van instead of multiple like if you were to have a jar of sauce, for example, it just replaces that. And it took, you know, two minutes to do this. Now we're going to get our skillet up and we're going to get the chicken cooking. 
So if you have a lot of counter space, you could get your chicken started and then make the sauce on the side and multitask and save some time. But if I were to try to do that, I would probably end up dropping something and spilling and ruining the entire meal. So I do my prep ahead of time, but by all means, if you have this space, then you can do things in different order. And keep in mind with my chicken breasts, I have these portioned out to four ounce portions. They're going to cook very quickly. And that's one of the reasons that I do portion them out. I get them nice and thin so that they're a very fast cooking protein. If you have a chicken breast that's right out of the package, it might be super thick. It's going to take you a lot longer to cook this step than it's taking me. So always keep in mind the thickness of your chicken while you're cooking and while you're timing it out. Have a plate ready, get a plate on standby so that when these are done, you can pull it off and transfer your chicken to a plate. The chicken is done. I'm pulling it off and putting it on this plate. I forgot to mention that I did season the chicken with salt and pepper. I like to use uh, Himalayan pink salt and fresh black pepper and season it generously. Like if you were just to eat this chicken breast alone, make it taste good with salt and pepper. That's how I want you to season your chicken in this step. So I'll get that on there. I'm just gonna cover it, keep it warm. The pan, I'm letting it roll and keeping it over the heat because we're gonna just go straight into our sauce. So this red pepper mixture is going straight in. And it looks like a marinara, only it's red peppers. So you wanna scrape up all the bits on the bottom of the pan, deglaze, get that chicken flavor up into your sauce. And then we're gonna add in some coconut milk. And I'm gonna go for a cup to start with. Mix that together. I love using coconut milk, uh, the light version instead of heavy cream because it gives you a nice creamy, creamy-esque sauce without the richness and heavy weight load of a heavy cream. Um, it's really good. I used it in my sun-dried tomato chicken. I use it in a lot of my recipes. It's something I always keep on hand in the van, so it never lets me down. And when I open a can, I just put the remainders in this mason jar, keep it in my fridge, and I'll even put it like in my protein shakes. So it's again, multifunctional, which for me, learning how to cook in this class B van, I've really just, you know, came to terms with, you have to find products that you can multifunction. The same that you would treat um, any equipment that's in a cabinet or something, the more you can put it to multi-purpose, the better. So start thinking about your kitchen that way, start thinking about ingredients that way, and you're gonna be a lot more comfortable as far as whipping up recipes. So this sauce, I'm gonna let bubble a little bit, I'm gonna let it simmer down, and I'm gonna let it thicken up just a tad, and once that happens, then all we need to do next is throw in our beans, which I did strain these and rinse them, and then the artichoke hearts, which I did the same. I strained them and I rinsed them. This is the quartered size. When you buy artichoke hearts, there's different sizes that you can buy. There's whole, there's quartered, there's like small, medium. You'll notice that there is a big variance on the price tag. So I usually try to look for, uh, I like, I end up getting the quartered a lot. They're probably on the cheaper end. That's probably why I end up getting them but I like the size. I'm going to leave them quartered because I wanna have a little bit of girth to this in my meal. If you wanted to stretch it out, you could chop these finer so that the artichoke is more like distributed throughout the dish. But I think it's really nice to have like a nice meaty artichoke bite. So I'm gonna leave it whole for that purpose. The sauce is exactly where I want it to be. And next we're gonna throw in these beans. 
I'm going to add in all of these other ingredients before I add the chicken back in because you want to be able to mix it all up and get it jiving before you put the chicken back. And then the artichokes. When you put in the artichokes, just be careful that you aren't mashing them and breaking them up if your goal is to keep them in their form like I am. Uh, another good thing that you could add into this dish is just some chopped spinach. That would make a really nice color pop because greens are always an important thing to add to your meal. I eat a lot of greens for breakfast and other meals, so I'm not going to add it in here. But if you're trying to get more greens in your life, I would just grab a couple handfuls of spinach and just take my kitchen shears and just chop it right into this. And you can get like a huge mound into a pan. It wilts down so much. So this is ready. Now we're going to add in our chicken back in. It's still pretty hot because it didn't take that sauce long. Um, but what we're going to do is just arrange it in here. Just for display and also serving. And then these juices that are in here, we're going to put the chicken juices back in too because that's just all flavor. So get those in, nestle those chickens in. You can toss it around. And then we're just gonna sprinkle some olives on top. And the olives, not only are they gonna be a nice little color for garnish, but also salty. Saltiness is always good. These are Kalamata olives and I always have these. These are another one of my pantry staples. So the artichokes, the beans, those are pantry staples. So when you get the hankering to put something together, you have your go-tos. I cut these in half. They've already been pitted. And then just sprinkle it in. And that's it. We're done. Meet us next week for a new healthy recipe and on Sundays with A. Aaron for RV lifestyle, some travel stuff, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.